I love Inkscape. It's free. It's fun. You can make all sorts of vectors with it. But Inkscape has updated their version. When I go into Help and I go into About Inkscape, we can see here it says 1.2. So if you don't have 1.2, you can go to the website and download it. And if you're new to Inkscape, or if you're new to version 1.2, I'm gonna walk through a couple tips and tricks in this new and hopefully improved version. Let's jump in. Now, if you've never heard of Inkscape before, you're in the right place. There's a website here called inkscape.org, and this is where you can download the current version of Inkscape. If I go to download and current version, that's gonna bring me to 1.21. So that's 1.2, and this is the first version of that. You can click right there to do Windows, or you can click right here to do the Mac or Apple. You can also download older versions. So again, I just clicked on download current version and then over on the right hand side, you're gonna see a whole bunch of other versions as well. So if you don't like version 1.2, you could go back in time and grab version 1.1 for example, and then you can click right here for Windows and then there's actually no real great Apple, you could try here, DMG file, but a huge upgrade with this 1.2 is that there now is a Mac OS desktop version. So that's pretty cool. If you're an Apple person, rejoice because now you can use Inkscape as well. And if you've never heard of me before, well then it's my lucky day because I get to introduce myself. My name is Zen Watercooler. I've actually got a channel called Zen Watercooler, but you're on the channel here, Crafty Stacks. And this is about digital designs and deep dives. And a lot of it is Inkscape related. So if I click on this playlist, for example, I'm going to get Inkscape playlist, there's over 30 videos right there and you can check them out in glorious detail. And there's all this other cool stuff. When you first install Inkscape, you may get a screen that looks like this. It's got a quick setup and you can pick your canvas. I'm just gonna pick solid white to start. And then my keyboard, I'm not gonna overthink this. It's just the Inkscape default. And then my appearance, I can do colorful, grayscale. I would just stick with colorful to start. You can also flip it over to a dark mode, but I'm gonna show you how to change that in just a second here. Now I'm gonna click save and it's gonna open right up. I'm gonna click the thanks button, and now we're gonna go in here. It says new document down at the bottom. That's what we're gonna click on, and it'll open up brand new. Okay, so if you're new to Inkscape, or even if you're a veteran in Inkscape, it can be a little bit intimidating because it's just this screen with this little page on it, and then you've got these menus along the left-hand side, you've got these menus along the right-hand side, then you've got this color palette down at the bottom, and it's like, what is going on? Where do you even begin? So let's begin right here at the beginning, which is File, and then Document Properties. And what that's gonna do is open up this box right here. And we can take a look at the display and we can set this page. Now you don't have to use the page, but if you want to use the page as a guide, then you can use this page. You can format, you can select all these different pages. So I'm gonna select, for example, US letter. That's gonna change the style of my page. It's gonna change the actual values of it. So I can see here my width now is 8.5 inches and it's 11 inches in height. I could change it again to A10, for example. That's gonna change it to a completely different style of page. So you've got all these different options here. I'm gonna go back to US letter, which is eight and a half by 11. There's also grids as well, and I can enable or disable the grid. Now, if I enable it, I can now view the grid. And so I can go up here to view, and then I can click on page grid. And that will now give me a grid that pops up as well. I can also click this little button here that says show dots instead of lines, and it will change the way the grid looks now to be little dots instead of lines. Now you can also change here on the bottom right, major grid line every five pixels. And so if I change this now to be every grid line every you know, 30 or 40, you can see how the grid now is getting larger and larger. If I just hold on to this, it just goes really, really large. So you can make the grid as big or as small as you want. And again, you can click the show dots and you could have that if you don't want something so in your face. These dots and these grid lines won't show up when you export a file or export a graphic. They're just there behind the scenes to help you make the best graphic possible. And if you wanna turn off the grid, you have two options. You can either click this visible piece right there, that'll make the grid disappear, or you can go up to view and you can select page grid and you can turn it off there as well. Now another thing you can take a look at here is I've got my background transparent, but it doesn't have to be. So when I go into file and document properties, right under display, I can see it says checkerboard right there. Well, if I uncheck checkerboard, you can see now it's just a gray background and a white piece of paper, but you can change that too. 
there's a page button right here and you can change the page to be whatever color you want. You can also click on the border. The border is right around the page and you could make the border any color you want. See how it changes to red now? Or I can move this down to be blue. Or you don't have to have a border at all. So I'm just gonna uncheck it and you can see the border now disappears. There's also this desk color, which is everything else. So you can change that very easily too. So if you're looking at your Inkscape and you notice it looks different than mine, that's okay. I've got mine running here in this thing called dark mode and you can switch it over to dark mode or other modes if you like. Simply go to edit and then preferences. And then under preferences, you're gonna see a menu along the left hand side. And I'm looking for a thing called themes. It's actually buried under interface. So I'm gonna look for theming. And then from here, I can change the way this looks. High contrast basically looks like a white screen like what we were seeing before, but you could also do high contrast inverse and that's the dark theme. So you can pick what you like to use here for Inkscape based on personal preferences. So let's open up a graphic and we're gonna create a vector from it. I'm gonna to go to file and open and then I've selected an image from my library, from my hard drive, and I'm gonna pick smooth, which optimizes the quality. So I'm opening a PNG, which is basically a file, a picture, and here we can see it's gonna open up it's a pretty big file, and this is not a vector. When I click on Edit Paths by Node, nothing comes up. It's just a picture. So what I want to do now is actually create a vector out of this. Pretty easy to do. I'm going to go to Path, and I'm going to go to Trace Bitmap. Now a little menu is going to pop up on the right-hand side, and what you really care about here is the threshold. So if I go to 100, for example, on Threshold, it's so dark that it makes the entire graphic black. Same thing, if I go down to zero, it's going to make the entire graphic white. Now, depending on the memory on your computer, you may wanna uncheck this live updates. What's happening if live updates runs is it's continually trying to re-render this in the thumbnail image. So you may, have, you may find it a lot easier to say, put it to threshold of 64, 65, and then click the update preview button. It'll just take a second and it'll go, okay, there it is. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna click update preview one last time just to double check. I think that looks really good. And now I'm gonna click the apply button. And now the system's going to think for a couple seconds and it's going to make its copy of this as an actual vector file. It's kind of hard to tell if it's done, but I'm gonna select it and I'm just gonna drag over to the left and we can see there's a second image now that pops up. Hmm, so which one's the vector? Well, it's pretty easy to find out. You just click this little edit paths by node button. You can see the one on the left has a whole bunch of nodes, all these little bumps, and the one on the right doesn't have that at all. So I'm gonna simply select the, this one on the right and I'm going to hit the delete key. That will eliminate my original image. Now I'm gonna select my picture, which is really my vector, and I'm going to shrink this down using the little arrow, diagonal arrow key along the top left or the top right. You can make this skinnier, fatter, you can change the dimensions of it. I'm going to hold down the control key and what that does is lock in the aspect ratio. If I don't do that, then when I select the corner, I could scrunch it in and that's not what I want at all. So you'll become pretty good friends with Control Z or Control Z, that's the undo button. And here I can make this now smaller. So I'm gonna click the control button, I'm gonna move this right down, and now I've got a good looking vector right there in the middle of my page. Again, I'll click Edit Paths by Node, and we can see now I've got these nodes. Now I can change these nodes if I want. I can drag them out. Again, I'll click Control Z, which will undo that. I can also drag in between the nodes. So that's an option as well. And again, I'll click Control Z to undo that. Now, if I'm happy with the way this looks, I can export it. You've also got a color palette down below where I could click any color in the color palette and it will simply change the color of the entire vector. I'm just gonna leave it black for now though. Okay, so I'm happy with the way this looks. Common question I get is how big should my vector file be? It doesn't really matter because a vector is infinitely scalable. So I don't really need to make it very large at all. In fact, I could make it quite tiny I can put it right like that. I'm gonna zoom out. That's my page, for example, my eight and a half by 11 page. It's not very big at all. I'll just zoom in. Now when I go over to the right hand side to export, I'm gonna click this export as a PNG image. I'll click on that. My export button's gonna come up. Now if I have this highlighted on the page button, it's going to export the entire page. So that's gonna be a really big image with a little tiny cake in the middle. So that's not what I want. So instead, I wanna make sure that this is selected, which is my cake, and then I wanna select selection. And now we can see that cake has popped up 
and my width is 400 by 469 pixels at 96 dots per inch. I can change this dots per inch to 300, and now we can see the width is 1249, the height is 1466. By holding down the control key, I can make this larger or smaller, and you'll notice over on the right hand side, the width is going larger and smaller as well. So now to export this document, I'm gonna click this little files button, and that's gonna open up my directory. Okay, so I've named my file now birthday cake. It's a PNG file, and that has a transparent background. I'm gonna click save, and we can see now down at the bottom, the little blue line is saying it's exporting it. So as soon as you click the save button, it saves it now. And we can see here inside of Photoshop, there is a transparent background. I'm opening this up only at 12 and a half percent inside of Photoshop. When I actually go to view actual pixels, it's huge. So it's a nice big file that you can use if you're making t-shirts, coffee mugs, whatever you're trying to use for print on demand, or if you're selling digital files. I really hope you found this walkthrough helpful. I absolutely love Inkscape and there's lots and lots to do. We've just scratched the surface. So make sure to check out my channel Crafty Stacks with plenty more deep dive tutorials about Inkscape and other graphic design tools too, like this one. Thanks again for watching everybody. If you've got any questions, throw them down in the comments below. I'd absolutely love to hear from you. Thanks a lot for watching.